Hi, I'm Emily Taylor from Collage Quilter. Today is the one and only video tutorial about making blooms, this project behind me. And you can see I'm just gonna get started right here. So I wanna walk you through the entire process in one video and you can pause it as you need to. So first of all, let's talk about kind of my setup here. Um, you'll see that I like to work on a vertical surface. This allows me to walk away and get a better perspective on what I'm working on. You'll also see, so it's a, a drafting table that has a piece of foam core and the foam core is covered in felt. And this just holds my foundation panel steady so that it's not slipping around. Um, the foam core also allows me to stick pins in it and I'll show you more about how I do that in a minute. I mean, sometimes I'll, you know, if I just want to have a picture or a palette hung up, it's really easy to do with foam core. So um, that's kind of my setup and I like to have a table close by so that I can have everything spread out here. Now the supplies that you're going to need specifically for this project are the pattern which is available at collagequilter.com and again this is called blooms this pattern is nice and small it's an easy uh, project to complete so that you have a beautiful wall hanging in time for spring it is 18 inches by 24 inches you can use a poster hanger to hang it up so you need a great pair of scissors and I really love my Karen K Buckley six inch perfect scissors. These are great. And then you're going to need your fabric. Amelia, do you want to show them what I've got here? This is the palette that I've chosen. So I've got, I actually used this piece of fabric as my inspiration. I really like the dark uh, teal background and the bright orange and yellow and pink and those pretty chartreuse green. So that's going to be the inspiration for my palette of this project. And then in addition to the fabric, let me also show you that I selected a spectrum. So you can see it really good in the greens and you can see it good in the yellows that I go from dark to light, again, dark to light, and then light to dark. So all of them. So I have a really good assortment of fabric and I can pull in anything else that I want, uh, any other pieces of fabric that I want, but this is the bare bones of what I want to do. So I've decided that my background is going to be this beautiful teal color in the background. And then we're going to do a big, beautiful pink flower here and yellow and orange or vice versa, something like that. Um, then the final thing that you're going to need is a method to adhere your fabric to your project. Um, to your foundation panel. And I'm going to use this time light steam seam too. I really do encourage you to figure out which um, adhesive method you prefer. So there are multiple different types of double-sided fusible web. You can use any of those. I just prefer light steam seam too. Um, or you can use glue. You can use tacky glue like Elmer's glue or um, I like fabric fusion, which is a permanent fabric glue. Um, you decide what you like. So again, a foundation panel that's included in the pattern, scissors, fabric, and your adhesive. And that's all you need to get started on this. So I want to show you real quick how I prepare my fabric with um, steam seam. I don't like to have a lot of fabric with steam seam on it. I only want to create enough fabric that has steam seam that's um, that will be used in this project because I don't like I don't like leaving steam seam on my fabric very long. So a little trick that I've learned is it's great when you are shopping for fabric to request that they just cut an eighth of a yard and that's four and a half inches. Um, so then I can just slice off a piece of um, fabric that size and it's it's perfect. So what I'm going to do is double sided fusible web a steam seam looks like this. I'm going to peel back the paper side and expose the temporary adhesive. And I'm simply going to lay my fabric down, press it down onto the foundation or onto the steam seam. So you can see there's the sticky stuff and I am just laying my fabric right onto this steam seam. 
and now I'm going to lightly Should we walk over and show them that? Okay. So I'm going to lay this piece of, of paper down just so that I don't get any residue on my ironing board. And I'm just going to very lightly with a dry iron press the steam a seam. I don't need to use steam at this point, but that will ensure that my um, fabric has now been adhered to the steam a seam and now it's ready to go. So let me go ahead and I think that's all you need to know. Now I'm just going to start working. So I'm gonna just get my, I'm gonna start in the background first. Here we go. And I will say, um, generally my cuts kind of look like that. They're quite angular with maybe a rounded edge. I use a pin to score the back so it moves along really quickly. Sometimes when I score the fabric, um, it's going to pull a few little threads, so I'll just kind of clean those threads up. So I've got my background fabric already, and I'm just going to move right along. This is the final piece of the background that I'm going to put on. Got that done pretty quick. Ta-da! Okay, so a few things that I want to point out. Um, this is, the great thing about steam -a seam is it's temporarily adhered. And before I, yeah, bring it closer, I want to just, I want to just show a few I want to show details, okay? So I can really easily lift it up if I want to and replace things, but um, you'll see the overlap is about a quarter of an inch, sometimes a half inch, sometimes um, an eighth of an inch. And it's kind of ragged around the edges because I'm going to overlap the flowers along these edges so they won't be sharp edges. They'll be rounded edges, everything will overlap. And that's why I started in the background so that all the flowers and the leaves can overlap the background area. 
Um, okay, so from this point, what I'll do is, if I'm happy with, with it, I will go ahead and iron it. And rather than take it risk having pieces fall off, carrying it over to my iron, I'll actually plug in my little baby iron. This little guy. Yep. And let's assume he's plugged in and he's hot. And what I'll do is just press him just like this. Just enough so that everything um, is somewhat fused to the background. And then I can really easily move it without worrying that these pieces are temporarily going to fall off. So we're done with the background and I will continue working on the flowers and the leaves after I get my fabric prepared with the steam seam. Okay, see you in a minute. All right, now I'm gonna get started on the leaves. This shouldn't take very long. Okay, so I'm done with the leaves and now I can again take my little um, baby iron and I will just gently press everything so that it stays in place. Next up, I'll be working on the flowers. Okay, I'm back here. I have finished the quilt top, so let's take a look at it. I wanna point out, um, so I'm, I'm just about to press it, so you can see that these pieces are, they're not, they haven't been pressed down yet. Um, what I did with this, if you are on my Facebook group, you know that I tried a, different, a couple different um, fussy cut pieces for the center and took some poles and I just had to kind of fuss with it. So a really easy and fun way to finish the center of one of these flowers is to select a piece of fabric, fussy cut it out, and then even um, fussy cut a few pieces and kind of overlap them like that. So it just begins to mimic the look of a flower. So we've got kind of this very impressionist looking method going on and then a fussy cut center and then I tried to extend a little bit of the fussy cut pieces out to some of the edges so you can see a little bit of this out here and um, overall I think it turned out really well um, I'm really excited about the way it, it has finished how, how, the way it looks so I'm just going to finish this now by pressing it um, I'm gonna be steaming it really super good remember when we're when we're using light steam a seam 2 um, steaming it excessively is exactly what we need to, to do to make the, um, to soften up the quilt top and to cause the permanent fusion. So I'll get this finished. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to add some leaders. 
um, because I'm going to put it on my long arm machine and this is so small I just have to um, anyway I'm, I'm learning how to use my long arm machine and one thing I learned by mistake last time was that I needed some leaders leaders are edges so that I can um, pull this up and, and move it on my on my frame so I'll get to that point and then I'll see you over at my long arm machine and whether I'm making mistakes or not we're going to just dive in and you'll see how I'm going to finish this and I'm excited too to show you how I'm going to finish the quilt um, along the edges so I will see you in just a second hi everyone okay I've got my um, collage quilt top set up I've got the back the backing fabric the, um, the quilt sandwich with the backing fabric, the batting, and then the quilt top. And you can see I've attached them together with um, some pins in a few areas, but most important, I've got the top on leaders. The, the bottom is much larger than the top. And then um, I've done a stitch line across here, so I know that it's secure now on my machine. And my machine is a coronet, so it doesn't have, it's, um, it's much smaller and things are designed to just uh, be attached with these things. So it's really super fast and easy for me to just throw things on here and get started. So I am now, I'll be done quilting with the, quilting this in just a few minutes, probably 20 minutes. I'm not gonna make you watch me the whole time, but you can see how I do it. I mean, show them so, a little taste. Give okay, little I'll taste. give you a little taste. First of all, let me show you. Again, I'm not a professional long armor, so, and I didn't have the kind of thread that I want, so I just picked out some thread that matches, <laughs> just thread that goes on my domestic machine. This is all purpose thread, um, but it is the same color as the background, so that's, that's what was important to me. And I'll be changing my thread throughout the project. So I've got green lined up, and then I'll use yellow and pink, and I'll show you some close-ups of the finished project and I'll also post some pictures. So here I go, I'll just get started and then you can turn it off when you're done filming because this is gonna be boring. <laughs> right here so I am going to stop and head over to another section over here and cut my thread on the bottom okay okay I've just made a mistake that I have repeated actually multiple times <laughs> so I thought I'd show you what this mistake is um, the quilting is going along great but I let this get underneath the quilt so that it has now been stitched onto my machine. So there's a little, ooh, it's just one little stitch like right there where the back side has been quilted onto the machine. So I'm gonna have to get my seam ripper and pull out a few threads and I think fortunately it's just on the end so I don't think I'm even going to worry about it but I thought I'd share that mistake with you because I've made it a couple times not with this one but with another one um, with my clementine so anyway um let me take care of that and then we'll continue all right so I have finished quilting my project and I want to show you how I'm finishing this quilt so first of all um, can you see some of the quilting that's done on here? Again, quite dense quilting. Do you want to flip it around? A little bit like doodle stitching. Yeah, you might be able to see it. I'm not sure if you can see it better on the back. See it super well. Okay, so anyway, but while you're looking at the back, I want you to look at how I bound this. I'm actually not using a traditional quilt binding. I am, I'm going to demonstrate what I've done. So I'm just finishing the edges the same. I want it to look uh, like a collage edge to edge. So I'm simply taking my fabric pieces. They're about like that size and adding them to the edge like so, tucking it around and then pressing each piece as I go. 
uh, so that the finished project looks entirely collaged. So I'm going to finish this up real quick while you're watching and then we will, um, I'll show you the back side and my plan for the back side. And now once this is done, um, I have a darling, perfect little wall hanging just in time for spring. This will ease some of the gloom of being um, stuck inside for all of us right now as we go through the great pandemic of 2020. Um, hopefully you're all staying healthy and well. Um, know that we're all in this together. I think I've got one final piece right there. Okay. Um, now let me show you the back side and what I'm gonna do on the back side. Okay, here's the here's the the finished piece. Here's the back side, what the back side looks like. So now to finish off that edge, I have selected this darling ribbon and I'll just cut it to size and either stitch or or use a fusible on the back and just cover up that edge. So look how nice that's gonna look. Ta-da! And then it's a nice finished edge on the back. It looks beautiful on the front and my project is ready to hang on the wall. So there you go. Um, if you have any further questions, you can always find me, emily at collagequilter.com. That's my email address. You can also check me out or check out my um, Facebook groups. Uh, number one is Collage Quilter, but the one that you'll really want to check into is Collage Quilt Along with Emily. That's the Facebook group where I have lots of free content and video tutorials about making all of my projects. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it is helpful as you begin on your um, June Blooms project. I think we've changed the names a couple times. Anyway, it's the flower blooms is what we're going to call it. June blooms or blooms, okay? All right, take care everyone. See you later. Bye.